Putin's backbone. Belarus provides large military assistance to Russia in the war against Ukraine. The Belarusian military industrial complex is assisting in meeting the needs of the Russian army on the front lines. How and why Lukashenko's regime became one of the key allies in the war for the Kremlin is explained in the material by RBC Ukraine. Since the beginning of the large-scale aggression, Belarus has become a key ally of Russia in conducting military operations against Ukraine within the first seven months of the full-scale war. According to the Belarusian Hadun project, Alexander Lukashenko transferred over 65,000 tons of ammunition, hundreds of T-72A tanks, BMPs and Ural trucks to Russia. Only when Belarusian depots were depleted due to Putin's appetites, other countries, primarily Iran and North Korea, have become the main suppliers of ready-made weapons for Russia. Russia utilizes the full range of services from the Belarusian military industrial complex, but the key assistance lies in the restoration of military equipment damaged as a result of combat actions. Back in 2022, at the beginning of full-scale aggression, 60% of Belarusian military goods were destined for the Russian market. Today, this figure has increased even more. Currently, 120 Belarusian plants and design bureaus are involved in the production of 1,600 types of military products and services for the Russian Federation. In contrast, 9 140 Russian enterprises supply about 4,000 items to 67 Belarusian military enterprises. There is no other sphere where cooperation between these countries is as close as in the military sector. Moreover, analysis of open sources suggests that the production of the Belarusian military industrial complex is increasing. The Belarusian defense industry has also switched to military rails today. Hundreds of thousands of workers are employed in the plants who simply cannot be unaware of where the products they manufacture are going. However, military enterprises are perhaps the only sphere where one can earn a more or less decent salary in Belarus. Selwyn Lamaka, an Iraqi man who carried out several Quran burnings in Sweden, was reportedly found dead in Norway. He had staged several burnings and desecrations of the sacred book of Islam in Sweden over the past few years. Last week Mamika told a newspaper that he had been seeking asylum in neighboring Norway. Mamika, a Christian who turned atheist, was amongst the critics of Islam. Mamika moved out of Iraq in 2018, seeking asylum. Though a Christian who turned atheist, Mamika called himself an extreme ex-Muslim. Ex-Muslims are individuals who identified as Muslims once, left the religion due to personal reasons, differing beliefs, or disillusionment with its teachings, practices, or community norms," he added. Mamika had recently put an update about him shifting to Norway from Sweden. He also revealed that he has applied for asylum and protection from the Norwegian authorities. Further he confirmed that he will continue his fight against Islamic ideology no matter whatever it costs. My love and respect for the Swedish people will remain the same, but the persecution I was subjected to by the Swedish authorities does not represent the Swedes. I will continue my struggle against Islamic ideology since I started the struggle against Islam, I have paid and continue to pay the price, and I am ready for that, whatever the cost," he added. Multiple social media handles claimed that Selwyn's lifeless body was found in Norway. He obtained a permanent residence permit in Sweden in 2021, which was withdrawn and he was granted temporary residency until April 2024. Putin ally makes nuclear threats to UK and France. Kremlin propagandist Vladimir Solovyov has suggested launching nuclear strikes on two members of the NATO military alliance. According to Newsweek, Solovyov, an ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin and a state TV host, issued the warnings during two separate broadcasts of his show Evening with Vladimir Solovyov and Sunday Evening with Vladimir Solovyov. The Daily Beast's Julia Davis shared excerpts of the broadcasts on X. The notion that Russia could strike NATO members in response to the aid and weapons they've provided Ukraine in the ongoing war has been floated by Solovyov and many other Russian officials regularly since the conflict began in February 2022. Meanwhile, in Russia, 
Vladimir Solovyov assured fellow propagandists that none of them will be tried after the war is over because by then the British will have been eradicated through nuclear strikes, wrote Davis of the first state TV clip. Meanwhile in Russia, Easter would be incomplete without Vladimir Solovyov's nuclear threats to France, she wrote in another post sharing the broadcast. In the first state TV clip, Vladimir Kornilov, a political scientist, began by saying that the British newspaper The Daily Telegraph openly wrote that the Russian people are responsible. After the war ends, absolutely everyone has to be tried, including Patriarch Kirill. Solovyov interjected, Pardon, who is going to judge us? The British. Kornilov responded. Solovyov continued by issuing his first nuclear warning. The country, by that point in time, will be buried under a radioactive wave, he said. Kornilov said he hopes it won't get to a nuclear war. It won't. The radioactive tsunami will just wipe it away. Solovyov replied. In the second state TV broadcast, Solovyov criticized Paris mayor Anne Hidalgo for saying over the weekend that Russian and Belarusian athletes were not welcome at this year's Olympics, which is being held in the French capital. I want to remind this unpleasant, ugly Nazi beast that today is the 210th anniversary of the Russian army entering Paris. Both back then and now, we couldn't care less whether or not you are glad to see us. Whenever we need to destroy all of you, we will do it, said Solovyov. He added, so Paris, you don't want to welcome our athletes? Welcome our hypersonics. Fast, reliable and very unpleasant.